In this demo, we will show how to enable communication between devices on a CanOpen network and the Symatic ET200S distributed I.O. from Siemens. The communication is made possible by the One SI CanOpen module from HMS Industrial Networks, which acts as a translator between the CanOpen network and the ET200S, enabling them to communicate. We are using an Anybus S as an example slave on the CanOpen network. To create the configuration, we will use the Anybus Configuration Manager, a CanOpen software which is included in the product package from HMS. It can also be downloaded from the HMS website anybus.com. I have connected my 1SI CanOpen to my computer using the included USB cable and CAN adapter. In the Configuration Manager, I go to Online and select connection. In this case, I am connecting my PC and the One SI can open using a USB to CAN adapter, so I select this and click Config. I specify that my adapter is USB to CAN compact. I want my board rate to be 500 kilobit per second, and I'll leave the SDO timeout unchanged, 5000 milliseconds. I click OK and then initialize the connection by clicking the Connect button. To find out which nodes that are connected to the CanOpen network, I click Scan Network, and the software shows me the currently connected nodes, the Anybus S and the One SI CanOpen. Now I move on to configuring the two nodes which the software has detected. I click on the One SI CanOpen and move on to Device Type, where I select that this should be the manager or master. I then select my manager settings. In this demo, I'm using the most common scenario, which is to tick the first four checkboxes. I then go on to my slave device. To have the best default values for my slave device as well, I choose the first four checkboxes. I have now specified the functionality for my nodes. Now it's time to set up how the data should be sent between these two devices. I do this in the PDO Mapping tab. To the left we will see what is sent from each node, and to the right we will see what is received by each node. We first select the Anybus S and specify that the first transmit object should be Byte 1. We then select that the receiving node should be the one SI can open, and that it should receive the object to Byte 1 in its out area. In this configuration, I have decided that I want to send and receive 8 bytes, and consequently, I want to add 7 more bytes in sequence. I right-click and select Map Next Available Object. This adds the next available object in the node, in this case, byte 2. The next available object is the next mappable object in the node, ordered by object number and sub-index number, from the lowest number to the highest. I repeat this command until I have 8 bytes from the manager to the slave. I can also press the insert key to carry out this command. Next I do the same thing in the other direction. I add the first transmit object from the 1SI can open and the first receive object for the Anybus S and then repeat this command by mapping next available object 7 times. I am now finished with my transactions and want to set up surveillance on the CanOpen network. I want the manager to supervise my slave and vice versa, so I will know if a device goes offline. I go back to the Network tab and select my slave, the Anibus S. Under the Heartbeat section, I specify that a heartbeat should be sent to the slave every 500 milliseconds. The Anibus S should also expect to receive a heartbeat back from the 1SI CanOpen located on node ID 10 at least once every second. I do the same thing for the one SI can open. If one of the nodes do not receive a heartbeat from the other in the specified time frame, it will alert and I will know that a node has gone offline. Finally, I want to download my configuration to the network. I click the button Download Configuration to Device and all parameters are downloaded to the one SI can open and the CanOpen network.